So <clears throat> this is the start of a new engine project I'm doing along with a combination with myself and my younger brother to um, build a four-cylinder two-stroke that I'm calling the RZ1000. So this would be a four-cylinder engine based on YZ250 cylinders and crankshafts but using fuel injection similar to what I used in the in my four valve two stroke um, it's a square four in a lot of ways but it's not it's more like a v4 but it doesn't really matter because the cranks are pairs of two just arranged around the um, clutch um, so this is all the stock parts I've been modeling off was it 250 cylinder I'm just using the crank case there for the cavity and for the um, uh, base on the height etc. It's the head there, it's a stock crank. So I'll, uh, I'll go and show you the models I've drawn so far. Here's the, uh, here's the base um, AutoCAD 2D model. So it's just basically a layout drawing, not a whole lot more. So these are the cylinders, heads, there's a fuel injection intake there. Um, so two strokes don't like to run in reverse and what I'm saying that is you don't want the thrust, the piston thrust on the exhaust side. Um, some engines have done that and it's a failure in the end usually. They get away with it by offsetting. The NS, I think it was the NS 250 Honda, it was a 250cc three cylinder and they ran both, they ran they ran it, this layout, so here's the exhaust, here's the lower exhaust here, so it would go at the bottom of the crankcase. Here's the upper exhaust here going at the back, but see, if you run both of these primary drive gears onto the clutch, this, this engine here is going backwards because it's turned around the other way. It's going forwards, we call forwards anti-clockwise, looking from the left of a motorcycle. Um, so this, this here would use a secondary primary drive gear, so here's the primary drive gears on the cranks and then this one drives through another gear and then onto the crank just another primary drive gear as an idler so that gets its rotation in the opposite direction so its thrust is onto the colder side of the cylinder onto the intake side like they truly need to be um, I've arranged these cylinders around basically the intake being you know and I would make a big carbon air box around this, I assume, something like this. So the, the in, I wanted the lower cylinder horizontal and not much further down. Um, you could lay the cylinder, you could slant the cylinder downhill, downwards, but if you get a flooding problem, you can get a hydraulic issue quite easily. So I'd rather have it just horizontal and no lower than that. Um, this, so the whole base of this bike is based off a... Um, I'll build this crankcase and whole engine to fit in a modern, a fairly late model R1 Yamaha. Um, if you think about it, a um, YZ250 makes, I think it's 52 horsepower, so this is theoretically a 208 horsepower two-stroke race or even possibly street rideable bike. Um, its gearing will be a lot different from the R1. The R1's a I'm not sure, 12, 14,000 RPM engine. This thing will be a basically an 8,000 RPM engine, so it needs a lot of um, secondary gearing. Basically, um, probably the final drive, the chain will be, have to be a 1 to 2 or something like that. So I'll go to the other models here. Here's the here's a cylinder in uh, SolidWorks I've drawn. It's quite a complex little thing to draw, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, I didn't bother putting the transfer ports or anything on it because they don't really mean much for a layout drawing. Um, remember, I'm not I'm not reproducing these cylinders. I'm buying and using stock Yamaha parts for this um, because it's on a, a road going bike on an R1. It'll have a a real alternator, um, and it has to have that for a fuel injection anyway. So because I have you know, actual voltage, actual um, wattage from an alternator, I have the ability to make the power valves operate off stepper motors instead of off the mechanical governor like they have, and it's a little easier to build that way. So on the uh, on the power valve cavity on the side here, I would 
um, make a, basically a, a thin stepper drive off this to drive up to the pushrod for the power valve. So that is quite nice because then I can program that from the fuel injection. Possibly ramp the power valve in and out at a slower rate. Maybe taint, taint, uh, sorry, tone down the power a little bit, the, the power, power band a little bit, should I say. Um, here's the cylinder head. So see, I've drawn all these parts as, as separate pieces, as, as you do in a model. And then I'll ins insert all these into the assembly model of the engine. Um, what's this one here? Here's the crankshaft. Um, one thing I have to do is, this is a stock crank here with the, the taper for the magneto as it would have it on the dirt bike. Um, for this version I have to make, I have to press different cranks together to use both the spline drive sides so that the spline drives will couple together between the two crankshafts on the same plane. Um, sadly, the uh, spline on the end of the crank is an odd spline so I have to make a an unusual pressed spline to um, to adapt these two so they're on a 180 degree firing. I assume, assume I'll fire this thing as a even fire engine. I can't see a reason not to at this point but hey add something in the comments if you think it should be like a, um, a 270 degree firing order or something like that but it should be quite smooth I, I imagine um, like that. So go back to cylinder again. Um, so this is this is quite an interesting project. I'll, it's something to do. I think what the crankcase will be is um, three piece three pieces with a vertical split in the and so the center section is the main section and the outer portions of the other crankcase halves will be more like a, a crankcase itself and then. Uh, I want to make the gearbox like a cassette box. Basically, you can remove the the gearbox as an assembly and set it up on the bench and slip it in the side. Basically, like a race race car even or a race bike does. Um, anyway, uh, leave leave comments or whatever you want. Give me some ideas of what you think I should do with this, as far as whatever. But um, anyway, I'm working at it. As soon as I get I don't have any yet. As soon as I get hold of an R1. I probably just need a blown up R1 engine to then to use the um, the clutch and the primary drive gears and the gearbox out of and then I can engineer and draw reverse engineer basically off uh, all the uh, bearing centers and gear centers and, and you know for all the shift change mechanism. Um, my intent right now is to mach to draw this crankcase as a solid model and machine it as a um, a foam part and then use the lost foam casting method for it. It's uh, pretty efficient. I've, I've seen quite a bit of that stuff going on. It's it's preferable to a billet. I could do this out of a, a, some big slabs of billet, but it's just a lot of machine time. And eventually I want to produce more of these. This isn't just a one-off. This should be a, a producible engine you could bolt into your late model R1 Yamaha. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll head towards that path. It needs to be electric start. It's fuel injected. Um, all of modern stuff for a modern engine. Um, I can possibly, you know, a, 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 if you've ridden a YZ250, they're a pretty violent little thing to ride. And so I'm, I'm wondering what four times that into a, into a street bike or a race bike might be like. You know, it's uh, <laughs> quite the ride, I imagine. It, um, the mid-range torque that a two-stroke two has like that is pretty incredible. You know, an R1, you have to wind it up to make the thing go, but, but a, a YZ250, no. So... Um, Anyway, um, I'll uh, I'll work towards this. I'll I'll get the crankcase kind of drawn up a bit, and I'll I'll do another video on that. But anyway, thanks a lot. Make sure to leave some comments and tell me what you think of the thing. Anyway, thank you.